All right, welcome back. Next up, let's talk about configuring Webpack to work uh, to spit out multiple bundles. Instead of just one with everything, we might want to separate out our own app code from our vendor code. So let's say we're using the Bootstrap JavaScript and a couple, I don't know, jQuery and maybe uh, some other library that we need. But they're not going to change very much or ever in our application, but our main code will. So we can have two different bundles, and one of them will be vendor.contenthash.js. It will stay the same almost all the time unless we update that code or, or I don't know, we upgrade which version of Bootstrap JavaScript we're using or something like that. Uh, and then we can have our main that changes more frequently. So this is actually not too difficult to do. All we do is set up a different entry point if we want. So inside of source, I'm going to make a new file called vendor.js. And to start, um, I'm just going to put, I don't know, alert hi from vendor, just like that. And then I'm going to go into my webpack common.js, where we have our entry. It's set to index.js. I'm going to make it an object instead. And then each property will be the name portion of a file. Main will be based off of index.js. And then vendor will be based off of dot slash source slash vendor dot js. So now Webpack is going to work its magic on both of these entry points. It's going to take this first one and it will call it main. But remember in production, we have a problem in our output where we're always calling everything main. So I'm going to refactor this to be name in brackets, which will be main or vendor dot content hash. And I'll also do dot bundle dot js. And then in dev, I'm going to change this to be name dot bundle dot js. So that name is coming from here, main or vendor. We have two entry points. Let's see what happens now. Need to add my comma. All right, let's try it with npm start using the dev server. It opens it up. Okay, so we get hi from vendor and then everything else loads. Okay, that alert is kind of screwing things up. But if we look in our sources, we have a main dot bundle and a vendor dot bundle. And our vendor bundle includes our alert as well as some other webpack stuff. And our main bundle includes all of our files and everything that we have in our app logic, the code that we're writing. So let's go back and test it now in npm run build and just make sure that the content hash is working. So our file names are named correctly. We have main.contenthash.bundle.js and vendor.bundle.js. And then inside of our index, we now have two script tags, as you can see. So I didn't add either of those. Both of them were added automatically. So you can see now, hopefully you can see how this becomes pretty easy. If you want to have multiple files or multiple bundles, all you do is add a separate entry point. So let's now go and add some bootstrap JavaScript in. So you can see the utility of this. So inside of my vendor JS, I'm going to just import bootstrap just like that. We already installed Bootstrap up in node modules and we've, we're using the CSS, but we're not using, here's a CSS by the way, we're not using the JavaScript. If I wanted to add a nav bar in, which requires JavaScript, let's just use this simple one here, which will use JavaScript when you collapse or when you shrink the page down, it will collapse into the little hamburger menu. So if we don't have JavaScript, it won't work. So right now, if I just comment that out, I go to my template, at the top of the body, I'll just paste in my nav bar, save, and now if I run npm, let's do just a local server, npm start, we get the nav bar and it does collapse, but the toggle, the drop down, is not working. We're not getting that drawer because JavaScript is not running from Bootstrap. So we go back to our code in vendor.js, I'll import Bootstrap, and you can see we run into an issue. So after I saved over here, and I imported Bootstrap. I didn't even have to restart the server, but it says that Bootstrap can't resolve jQuery, which it relies on, and popper.js. So two dependencies I'm going to install, npm install dash dash save dev jQuery and popper.js. On the Bootstrap docs, it makes it pretty clear that you need those in order to use Bootstrap. Uh, I just didn't in include them right away because we were only using the CSS, which doesn't depend on those. So now if I run npm start, and here we go. As I collapse this down, there we go, our JavaScript is working. 
Lastly, let's do npm run build. And we'll see our vendor JS that is spit out right here has all of Bootstrap JavaScript included. It also has things like jQuery in here, which it depends on. If I search for jQuery, you can see there's what 71 instances of it. Here is where it's included. Uh, we also have Bootstrap, we have Popper JS. So all of those dependencies are loaded. And that's what our vendor JS file now contains. And then we have our app code, which is in main JS. And it's all being minified too. It includes the Bootstrap CSS. We will, in the next video, work on extracting CSS out into its own file. But for now, it's all happening inside of this file, main.js. Okay, so we just split up our code. We imported Bootstrap into vendor.js. You could follow this pattern with whatever other libraries you're using. So aside from Bootstrap, there's other JavaScript libraries that you want. You can put them in vendor.js and they will be bundled together into their own file. And it will always be that same content hash unless those libraries change or you somehow add something new in here or change the code. But this allows a browser to cache this file separately, which is less likely to change. And then your main file could change a lot more often. All right, so I'm gonna commit my code with Git. And then in the next video, I'll be back to talk about minimizing HTML and CSS, extracting our CSS into a separate file. Right now, we don't actually see a file here, but it's just magically working. So that's coming up next. If you enjoyed this video, my cat and I really appreciate it. If you share it with anyone you think would get something out of it, uh, leave a comment, subscribe, please, turn on notifications. Oh, so annoying asking you to do that. Anyway, uh, have a good day and I'll see you in the next video. All right, thanks.